It has been a long footballing summer, but there is no dearth of anticipation or excitement when the Champions League comes around. Matt Holland, football coach and a resident football expert here on Vion, joins me now from Hong Kong to set up the season. Matt, uh, you don't usually need to get excited about a Champions League season, but I must say that the draws have ensured that there will be much to look forward to in the group stages. In fact, match day one sees Bayern versus Barcelona and match day two sees PSG take on Man City. Yeah, for me, you know, it's, I saw an advert yesterday and uh, I think it's really hitting home how, you know, the excitement of the Champions League and, and these types of draws that have, that have been thrown at us, um, uh, particularly uh, the group of Man City. The big change, Matt, obviously comes in the personnel department. You know, Messi at PSG, Ronaldo heading back to Manchester United, Romelu Lukaku going to Chelsea and Griezmann also heading back to Atletico Madrid. All of these are marquee signings. But what I want to ask you is, can one signing make the difference in a Champions League season? I think, yeah, I, I don't think that they make a difference in terms of, you know, across seven games, but it, there'll be moments. And I think with these top clubs, you know, they, they're all pretty much punch for punch um, when it comes down to, you know, the, the big games. And quite often, they're always full of world-class stars, almost two in every position. But I think the, the acquisitions that these clubs have made, that you've just mentioned, those are potentially the players that during a moment late in the game, in a semi-final, you know, they can change it because it's more of a moment rather than a tournament uh, as a whole for me. We're just seeing pictures there of Lionel Messi's unveiling at PSG. Do you see a desperation in PSG? that this season it is the Champions League that is uh, the priority because not just Messi but the experience of Sergio Ramos, his great rival from Real, the solidity of the Italian goalkeeper Donnarumma who won the Euros and uh, also in that group they have to contend with City who like them are desperate but they do not have a 25 goal man. Yeah. I Man City, I, I've read a lot of articles during the last weeks. Um, very good, actually, articles about you know the depth of the squad and what they're missing and the adaptation a little bit of, of Gabriel Jesus now being recognised more of a, of, a, of a winger. It'd be a big blow to Man City on not just missing out on Harry Kane, but I think obviously the Messi situation was also somebody who they might have taken. Um, of course, they've signed Jack Grealish, who I think is a, a phenomenal player. I think he really came to light during this season Champions League because he seems to be the player that enjoys the big moments and you know he, he steps up his game when he plays at a higher level. But you know ultimately they will need that front man and they don't really seem to have one now. And I don't think you know Ferran Torres would be the answer for them. Um, in terms of PSG, they've had an unbelievable window possibly one of the best windows ever um, and we can go back decades if you want with that um, and of course signing Messi uh, to add to what they already brought in during the summer is going to be an amazing amazing group but of course you know the French League is, is a challenge but it isn't as challenging as the Champions League and these guys have to be on their game all the time because the step up in quality is much different to that of Man City and Liverpool, etc., competing in the Premier League. You know, I did ask you about Manchester City, but uh, Matt, the English clubs have been doing very well. Uh, five finalists over the last four seasons. Are we seeing the balance of power on the continent shift completely towards the Premier League, and especially after the signing of Ronaldo by Manchester United? Yeah, I think we, we you know, we see football sort of turns in, in or revolves in cycles, doesn't it? Um, you know, we, we talk about tactics and things that come back many years later, um, you know, certain styles and strategies. But I think if you relate this to the clubs now getting into the finals, you know, in these last years that, you know, from a, a British football perspective or English football perspective, uh, we've done very, very well. And, and I can only see that continuing. Um, for this season, whether we'll have another English club winning it, I'm not so sure. Um, but looking at the squads that they've got, um, they will still push towards the latter stages of the competition for sure. You know, Matt, when the draw uh, took place two weeks ago, it threw up the proverbial group of death, didn't it, with uh, Liverpool 
AC Milan, Porto and Atletico Madrid all bundled together. Now that's 15 Champions League titles and 8 finals between them. How do you see this one playing out? Do you think there will be lots of draws? Or will someone say like Liverpool throw off the handbrakes, especially when they're playing at Anfield? I think that there'll be a lot of high scoring draws. That's when I looked at the teams that are playing, um, of course, you know, you have Liverpool Atletico play in a you know very dominant style and an aggressive style, especially defensively. You know, they're fantastic scoring goals, but and they have top players in the front, but of course defensively they're very aggressive. Um, AC Milan, you know, you can never take away the defensive structure of an Italian team. It's, it's what they're known for, it's part of their DNA. Um, so they will also have that solidarity, but but ultimately, you know, these are clubs that are, that are going to go for each other. They have to. Um, Porto, of course, have history in the competition, winning it with Mourinho, um, but many, many years ago. And they will put on a good show with good talent, but they might not have enough. I think, you know, they would probably, I'm looking at them losing maybe three games out of the six, um, which is where the other three, I think, would try and pick up points. Okay, Italy are the flavour of the season uh, in European football and it's remarkable that in 2017 we were finding faults with the Serie A, especially after Italy failed to qualify for the World Cup. And now the talent that took Italy to the Euros is primarily drawn from the Serie A. There obviously have been some changes in coaches and personnel since the last season ended, Matt. But does an Italian team in your mind have the squad for a sustained Champions League campaign? Yeah, I have a few friends actually at one club who've just been promoted to Serie A, so I spoke to them for, for a long time over the summer about their transition there and, um, you know, how Italian football is. And, and I think it's on the up again, you know, the, the fact that AC Milan have had some, you know, a lot of changes during the last years, managers or coaches, um, players in and out, Inter having this exodus of players leaving, but also recruiting one or two. Um, I think that you, you can never rule out Juve also. Of course, they've lost Ronaldo, but they still have a lot of top, player, you know, top players and top talent in, in the club and in the squad. And of course, you know, Allegri returns. So, you know, he knows the club is going to be a little bit of a seamless transition for him and for them. So I think they might pick up where they left off with him. Um, and obviously to drive to drive forward. So I think he and they will be expecting to, to at least try to reach the last four. You know, Matt, we've seen over the years that to win a Champions League, you need the complete package. You need experience, you need game changers, and you also need a very wise coach. When, when you look around the 32 teams that start off, it's the usual, usual suspects, in a sense, who get thrown up, like Real Madrid, PSG, Bayern Munich, and the English clubs. And as you can see, I'm not putting Barcelona on that list, considering what they've gone through. Mm. Um, for me, I I don't know if I really fancy an English team. I think it'd be difficult for for you know for Chelsea to do what they did last season. Um, Liverpool, I don't think they're quite what they were. I'm not saying they're any they're any worse. I just don't think they've they've kicked on so much from this this style that they had a couple of years ago and how, how great they were. Um, I don't see Man City winning the Champions League this year, to be honest, unless they do something in January that helps them in the latter stages. Um, you can't, for me, it's sentimental maybe, but Ancelotti going back to Real Madrid, you know, the style that he manages with, and they, have, they still have a lot of top quality. They might find themselves in a position, but for sure, I think everybody should be looking at PSG and not because of Messi but because of the other four or five that they brought in alongside him and they definitely got a top coach who's looking to to stamp his mark on the global game which unfortunately couldn't do in that final with Spurs against Liverpool a few years ago. Okay, watch out for PSG and Real Madrid says Matt Holland. Hopefully we get a cracking season of football Matt. Thank you once again for your inputs and we will be reaching out to you as this tournament progresses. A pleasure, always.